loves America and he loves those who defend and protect it. The bill we're taking up, we're talking about taking up, does not do that. As a person who has been privileged and proud to spend over three and a half decades in uniform, I stand with these folks behind me, these patriots. I stand with the president and saying, do not take and do not make hostages of our service members for these needless programs that don't have anything to do with hitting the mark. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the National Defense Authorization. National Defense, right? It, it burdens our military by requiring to, to uh, comply with climate and co uh, combat climate change. I will guarantee you this, Al Qaeda, uh, the Quds Force, China is not burdening their troops with that. They're not burdening them with that. It places limits on the withdrawal of US, U.S. forces and moving them around. The president's trying to get our forces closer to the fight. But the bureaucracy here, the swamp, and the establishment doesn't want any of that. They think they're in control, not the commander in chief. It curtails the president's abilities to protect our southern border from drug trafficking, from human trafficking, from infiltration of all kinds of manner of terrorists if they would want to come through. How is that supporting national defense? It charges the Secretary of Defense to report to Congress by August of 2021 on how it will increase the lethality and reduce casualties by reducing dependence on, uh, on fossil fuels by 30% over 25 years. At the very same time, at the very same time, the people in this town and the people on the other side of the aisle are making sure that America is more dependent on fossil fuels. And finally, and finally, most people that join the military take up a higher cause. It's a calling for them. They want to defend America. They want to defend freedom. And they will sacrifice themselves to do it. And they do it in part because they know it is a meritocracy. That they will do the, do the best because they are the best by the will of their and the dint of their effort. This bill actually takes all that away and makes other reasons, reasons for promotion. Ladies and gentlemen, this bill eviscerates for the future our military and is a, is a discouragement for everybody that wants to join and be their best and do their best and defend America. And that's why I'm voting against it. Thanks, Scott. Chip Roy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm proud to follow uh, my friend Scott Perry, my friend Warren Davidson, uh, both veterans and my entire uh, group of colleagues here at the Freedom Caucus. All of us are here together, standing alongside the men and women in uniform, precisely with a vote against the NDAA today. We're here today to be standing with them against uh, a piece of legislation that has been again cooked up behind closed doors, cooked up by people and dropped on the floor with a one size fits all gun to the head, you must vote for this bill. You wanna know what's broken in Washington DC? It's that. We don't get to amend it. We don't get to go to the floor and have any debate. We're not gonna walk down here on the House of Representatives floor and offer an amendment and have it hurt. So we're not allowed to do that. We're gonna be forced to take it and vote on this bill and it's a bad bill as drafted. We should be taking it back starting over and putting forward legislation that's good for our men and women in uniform. To my colleagues, I would say, if you vote for this NDAA, you are voting for legislation that's gonna cripple small businesses with burdensome regulations right at a time when they can't take it. You're gonna be voting for a piece of legislation that continues wars, where today there's a young man or a young woman who just signed up, who wasn't even alive when we passed the authorization of the use of military force we're operating under. And you've got uh, a piece of legislation that's chock full of liberal priority projects like a chief diversity officer, a chief diversity officer. That's what we're focusing on on the NDAA when we're trying to defend the United States of America. And people are going to come and criticize us for saying you're not supporting our men and women in uniform. You're leaving them out without pay. No, this institution putting a bill on the floor filled with all of these things, business as usual in Washington are the ones undermining our men and women in uniform. So we're here today to stand with them and to defend them, and I'm proud to stand with these guys. And I'd like to turn it over to my friend, Dan Bishop from North Carolina. Thank you, Chip. Um, I am the newest to Congress of anyone that's here today, and I'm, a, I'm the harbinger of yet more uh, strong members of the Freedom Caucus who are gonna be here in the next Congress. And what has happened with the NDAA is that it is regarded as must pass legislation. And Washington being Washington has perverted its purpose uh, so that people can achieve their own pet projects, 
things way outside the context of protecting America, as others have already spoken to, or as another example, the notion that we're going to pass in, in this legislation a requirement that every beneficial owner of every business corporation across America essentially has to register their name in a federal registry. It has nothing to do with defending the United States. But the item that troubles me most is the restriction on the ability of the president to withdraw troops from Europe where Europe doesn't pay its share of its own defense costs, to withdraw troops from Afghanistan where we've been, as Chip Roy said, for 19 years. In order for things to change in Washington, things have to change in Washington. The fact that this is a must-pass bill cannot hold Congress's, uh, Congress hostage to the provisions that have been stuffed in it. So I'm honored to stand with my House Freedom Caucus colleagues to vote no on this bill, and I will vote to sustain the President's veto. Thank you, Chairman Viggs, for, uh, for organizing this. I'm Ted Budd from North Carolina's 13th District, and it's absolutely great to be here. You know, all of us here support our troops, and, and many behind me have, have actually served, but all of us continue to serve uh, those in uniform right now. But this NDAA is flawed in so many ways, as many of my colleagues have mentioned. And my main concern here is what President Trump's concern is here, and that is that big tech has silenced conservative voices for too long, and we should do something about it. I support President Trump's veto threat uh, in relation to Section 230 of the uh, Communications Decency Act. And it, what it does is it gives legal protections to big tech companies by defining them in that 1996 bill as platforms. But instead, today, they're acting like publishers by controlling the content. They're picking and choosing what we get to see when they should be acting as platforms. You know, if they don't want to act as a good faith platform, then I don't think that they should have these CDA 230 protections. We've talked about this issue for way too long, and it's time to act. And I support President Trump's line in the sand on this NDAA veto. And I'd like to yield to my friend from Texas, Representative Gomer. Thank you, Ted. Uh, I'm not going to repeat uh, the things that my colleagues have said. Uh, I couldn't do so as articulately as they have. But I do want to add one thing about Afghanistan. It hadn't just been 19 years. I mean, we've been an occupying force. And for those that don't know history, occupiers have never done very well in Afghanistan. And some try to throw up uh, Alexander the Great. He died leaving. I don't call that a big win. But anyway, I have uh, consulted, been with uh, our Afghan allies many times since 2000, 2001, uh, when uh, I guess about October of 2001, uh, the Bush administration undertook one of the most brilliant strategies. We had about 300 special forces, uh, special ops folks that were embedded with our allies, the Northern Alliance. Within six months, they had obliterated the Taliban, we provided aerial support and weapons, and they did the job for us. But as our Afghan allies have pointed out numerous times uh, in private conversations, look, we know you're gonna have to leave at some point. You can't stay here forever. All we ask is that the constitution you forced on us that allows the president of Afghanistan to appoint our governors, appoint our mayors, appoint our police chiefs. Just help us lobby to get an amendment so we elect our own governors, our own police chiefs, our own mayors, and then you can go. And yeah, the Taliban may come in and take over one province, but they won't be able to take over the whole country. But the way you have so centralized all the power in the president of Afghanistan, all they got to do is either bribe or knock him off. And by the way, when you leave, all of us that fought with you and for you are, will be killed. 
So when you come back again because you've been hit again, you won't have anybody here to help you next time. So there is no reason for us to stay indefinitely. The president is exactly right about that. And so it's time to go and we don't need, if Congress wants to declare war on Afghanistan, we have that power and we can do that. But short of that, we don't need to leave our troops there another 19 years. And I want to yield back to my friend, Andy Biggs. Thank you. I, I thank all of you for being here. And I thank uh, my fellow members of the Freedom Caucus. And I just want to iterate something from the, uh, the SAP that was put out by the, the, the administration earlier today. Um, and that's this, because we are in the same place. The administration, I would say the House Freedom Caucus, is ready to work with Congress on an improved NDAA or to separately enact critically important provisions of this bill, such as a pay raise for our troops and the renewal of expiring authorities through the appropriation process. We are ready to participate in this process. We would love to participate. We've, we've been foreclosed from doing that. And the result you get is a must-pass bill that's filled with frills and whistles that are, have nothing to do with the national defense, as has been iterated by my colleagues. We thank you for being here. We stand with the president, we stand with the American people, and we stand with the military of the United States. Thank you. Thank you, thanks for being here.